What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jared and today we are going to talk about if you need an aftermarket intake for your 6.0 power stroke. But first, if you guys haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Drop your comments down below. What's been your experience with aftermarket intakes on the 6.0 power stroke? And we're getting started right now. First and foremost, I see on the Facebook pages, the forums left and right, should I buy an aftermarket intake for my 6.0? And in short, it really depends. Is it gonna hurt anything? Absolutely not. Uh, in certain scenarios, it is vastly improved. And for some reason, these guys out there throw this arbitrary number of 500 horsepower. I've seen some guy quote 600 horsepower before you need an aftermarket intake. And I'm here to tell you exactly why that is 100% BS. Full disclosure for those of you guys that have not been on my channel before, uh, just finding me, or aren't familiar with my build anyway, I have a slightly modified 6.0. I'm gonna show you under the hood. We have an SMB intake, and as you can see, all opened up here. Intercooler pipings, it's all aftermarket under here, guys. So uh, just fair warning, I am slightly biased, but I actually have some facts we're gonna talk about here in just a second. Now some history about this truck right here behind you guys. We are running 175 stock nozzle injectors. <clears throat> Take two, we're running 175 stock nozzle injectors in this truck. It has a 66 millimeter VGT turbo from Turbo Times USA. Uh, sponsored this channel link down in the description don't forget to use discount code shout out to those guys we also have kill devil diesel heads we have an o-dog ported intake bd manifolds and y pipe a colt stage 2 cam uh kill devil push rods we have a lot done to this truck a built transmission and pretty much from that video the only thing that should have changed is the turbo on this truck everything else should be exactly the same i believe back then i was running a power max now again running the 66 millimeter from Turbo Time USA. So this truck makes a decent amount of power to say the least. It is not over the top, however, it does get up and go pretty well. It's run a 13.6 in the track. And what I'm here to really talk about is when do you need an aftermarket intake on your truck? In my opinion, when you start getting to bigger than stock turbos, that's when you need an intake on your truck. The factory intake becomes restrictive when you are outside factory parameters. So even on your really hot race tunes, you're probably slightly restricted with a stock intake. Now, if it's completely clean, if you put a brand new filter in there, yes, it is probably not gonna be a huge hindrance, but when you definitely go to even a PowerMax um, or, one of, or some of the smaller 61 millimeter turbos, you're now really starting to push outside the factory limits. That 61 millimeter, I wouldn't call it a definite to upgrade, but if you're at a PowerMax or this different 64 millimeter or larger turbos out there, 100% you need an aftermarket intake. Also on that, if you're running a non-VGT, I highly recommend an aftermarket intake because you are really moving a lot of air. I know some of the sizes of that don't necessarily make it seem that way if you're down in the smaller sizes, but still, in an aftermarket intake, you're flowing enough air to need one. Now, why do I know, why am I so hung up on this is guys comment all the time, you can make 500 horsepower in a stock intake. I don't believe anyone's ever backed that up with track times first off. And as somebody that's done dyno and track times, uh, you know, when you run a track time, people want the dyno number. When you go to a dyno, people are asking for your track time to back it up. Um, it's kind of goofy back and forth, but it seems like you need both numbers to really say you did a certain horsepower. But in my opinion, dynos are tuning tools, track times are the real deal, that's where it matters. Even though there's a lot that goes into that track time because you can mess up and launch, it's all a mess. One of the things some people will notice if my SMB, for instance, doesn't have the plastic top on it. Uh, that is for two reasons. One, it cracked, that's when I first took it off, and later down the road I realized I need more air. Now I have an older style SMB intake that is has a much larger box than the current model out there and it seemed to do just fine but I never ran that plastic piece on with my larger turbo. As far as VGT turbos go, I have a relatively large turbo. But I've talked to guys with PowerMax turbos that are running with the new style SMB fully enclosed and they're pulling their filter miner on just a PowerMax. That's not a huge turbo by any stretch. Um, but it is a nice upgrade. And again, this is part of what's pulling. If that filter miner's being pulled, it's saying that your filter is starting to clog. So if just a PowerMax is doing that, now a PowerMax is probably roughly able to do about 550. Horsepower wise, it's probably around there. So again, that turbo is designed to work well outside factory parameters, guys. 
A lot of people are saying not till 500 do you need one and that's just garbage. Now before everybody jumps on me and says, oh, you just don't, you don't know what you're talking about. You just like aftermarket intakes. That's not entirely true. I feel it's a cool thing to customize your truck with. However, no one can deny the factory intake for a six liter. It has the best filtration out there. It holds a ton of dirt. Your air has to go through like 10 inches of filter before it gets into the intake tube itself. So by far and wide, the factory setup, filtration, the best, hands down. The other thing with the aftermarket intakes is it's not that they don't filter really well, they do, but if you don't have good maintenance on them, they're going to let stuff through them. They're not gonna be as efficient. So I will say if you're running aftermarket intakes, be super on top of your maintenance on them. I try to clean mine roughly every other oil change, so about every 10,000 miles comes out to roughly twice a year for me. I do drive a fair amount. Whereas you can probably get away with a few years with a factory one in one of these things and never have an issue. For you guys running 100% factory everything, you're not even tuned, um, an air intake is a complete waste of your money. You're not gonna get performance. You'll get a little more sound out of it. That's really it. And again, if you're running a stock turbo and you're fully tuned on a race tune, it is a small restriction at best. When you jump up to the Powermax turbos or larger, even if you're running stock injectors, it is a restriction. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Now, if you're running stock injectors, is it gonna be a huge ordeal? Are you gonna be like, oh my God, I can't believe I've, I've gone this long without an aftermarket intake? No, but it is a restriction. Uh, and especially if you're doing injectors on top of that turbo, 100% the factory intake is not gonna move enough air to supply everything you've done. So if you're gonna spend the money, you know, $1,500, $2,000 on injectors, another $1,500 on a turbo, give or take the turbo cost, obviously, buy a $200, $300 intake. It's goofy not to, based because some guy on a forum uh, that never even tried an aftermarket intake has a 100% factory truck is telling you that it's good for 500 because Joe Schmo from 10 years ago supposedly did it. Now let's talk about actual intakes that I recommend guys. And um, I'll say this, the cheap ones on eBay, I don't recommend the filters on them. The tubes are probably 100% fine. Um, if you do go the cheap route, if you're trying to keep to a strict budget, at least buy a nice filter, SMB or AFE filters uh, to put on them, there's universal filters, but don't cheap out with that crap filter on there. Uh, it's gonna let everything through. You might as well run the thing open. Obviously a slight bit of an exaggeration, but please don't don't trust those junk filters. Getting up into a few premium options, you're talking Whirly Custom Fab, No Limit Fabrication, or some of your higher end uh, metal tubes. And if you still like the plastic, like what's on my SMB, then of course I highly recommend SMB. I do wanna say this, SMB filters, uh, if you get the new style that's out, uh, I think they've been selling it for like two, three years now. You're gonna need, if you have a larger intake, take the top off. It is a little, it is a more restrictive aftermarket one. The filter itself flows plenty of air. The design of it is more geared towards factory uh, than anything else. And I think that has a little bit to do with carb compliance. I have nothing to back that statement up. Just my, it's just a complete guess for me, but I do believe some of that is, has to deal with trying to stick with what um, the EPA and stuff want. I do want to say this, I will be working with the company that is making my degas bottle in order to make a aftermarket intake for the 6 liter. And again, it'll be uh, stainless steel, which I think is super cool, come powder coated. That is still a little bit out in the works, but it is something we are in the process of talking about once the degas bottle is finished. Aftermarket intakes, are they a benefit? Yes. If you're running a larger turbo on your truck, 100% benefit. Ignore. A lot of people reference car videos out there on naturally aspirated stuff. So don't have, no superchargers, no turbos, um, which I'm not knocking those types of vehicles, but they're trying to compare those type of dyno results on a gas engine one without any forced induction. And you can't really compare it. There are videos out there where people put aftermarket intakes on 100% stock vehicles and actually lose power. That is possible. Uh, with, some, with a lot of the designs in a turbocharger, I don't think that's really gonna happen because of the forced induction, but something to consider. But again, with a larger turbo, it is 100% needed. Guys, the factory intake is designed around the factory turbo and it does have added capacity for what it's capable of, but it falls on its face when you start talking 
63.5, 64.7s, uh, 66.2 like mine. Those turbos are far, all far out seed what the factory can do. Uh, even factory horsepower all tuned up. These turbos flat out need more air. So anyway guys, I know just a video I needed to make because everybody talks about it on the forums all the time. Should I get one? Should I not? Uh, links to some of those intakes down in the description below. For those of you guys that are interested, they are affiliate links. That means I do get a small portion of that. No added cost to you guys, just that I help lead you there. And again, if not, buy from whoever. I, I honestly don't have an opinion. It's just something that if you want to support the channel, uh, I do appreciate that. For those of you subscribers that have been with me for a while, more EPA updates coming. I swear this time, uh, within the next two videos, the tow review of the LML Duramax I drove the other day will be coming out. Also, I have a towing trip with a six liter. I didn't think I'd get one in this year, but I am. So there will be a tow video with this turbo coming up in the near future, guys. As always, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't already. Drop those comments down below if you're upset about this video. I'm sure there's gonna be comments about people being all sorts of upset about me saying aftermarket intakes are required for larger turbos. Um, although they're not required, they're a great idea, guys. So anyway, I kind of look forward to see what happens down in the comment section here with uh, everybody and their huge opinions on this. My opinion included, guys. That's all this is, an opinion. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next upload.